Good morning. My name is Eileen Binkley. <laughs> uh, I have a good teacher voice. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to begin with some thank yous. Um, oftentimes people ask me, how are you able to create this body of work and be a full-time teacher and have three children? And it is only through the support of my family. Um, I have an incredibly supportive spouse, Steve Binkley, who's like famous, all of you know him probably. Um, my mother-in-law, Teresa is here and Mark, of course. Um, my in-laws and then my dad and his wife are here and my mom and he, her husband abandoned me they are snowbirding in Arizona this winter so every time she facetimes I tell her well Leif isn't gonna remember you when you get home you better come home but she's having a good time so um, other people I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank John Richtrick for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> um, uh, I have a couple mentors here, people who changed my life uh, in profound ways. Karen Kinder was my first teaching mentor. Um, let's see, uh, Betty Beer took, she audited the fine art like figure drawing classes I was in in college. Uh, so she's she's been a role model of mine for 15 plus years. And don't think you're gonna get away with being anonymous back there. John Livingston was my first art teacher ever. And also I took his place at BHS um, when I taught there for a brief stint. And I'll talk more about that in my presentation. So let's begin. Okay, Seek Joy, A Mother's Recovery Through Watercolor. There we go. All right, there's little Eileen, her humble beginnings on a farm sitting on my dad's tractor. He could tell you the make and model. Um, I've been reading this book, Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. You should read it if you haven't. It's not just for, uh, you know, drawing and painting. Um, it's for writing. It's for everything. And a quote from her book, far from being a brain numbed soldier, our artist is actually our child within our inner playmate. This is my um, last piece that I just finished. It's called Juliet's House. It's a, a 10 by 16 watercolor on paper. I finished it two days ago. Um, and I don't know if you know Lynette Curlin, but it, Juliet commissioned it for Lynette. Um, and it has a lot of deep, profound meaning to their family. They've experienced loss. So it was probably the most powerful commission I've done. Um, and if they want to share more of that story, they can. But I'm very proud of this painting. I've come a long way and it takes time. And that's what I want to talk about is my development as an artist. But it is very hard to summarize 20 years of art making in 30 minutes. So I will try to be brief. But I am going to read my artist statement to you because I think it's the best way I can explain my journey. So, my watercolor paintings are inspired by a childhood on a small, a small South Dakota farm and the imagination fostered by vintage children's book illustrations. My grandmother grew incredible flower gardens at her farm, so I paint peonies, poppies, marigolds, and hollyhocks. On my farm, there were remnants of my great-grandfather's gardening and landscaping hidden in the shelter belts. My favorite secret place was a heart-shaped concrete pool that had trees growing out of it. My botanical paintings convey the fantasy world I created in my imagination as a child. I lost some of that magic in my 20s to depression, substance abuse, and to formal training in college. 
I stopped making art for several years. Becoming a mother changed my perception of drawing and painting and inspired me to create art that makes me happy. As a sober, healthy mother, I was able to recall the innocence of childhood. All of my art starts as a simple sketch. Sometimes I outline and shade the images with ink pens before I paint. For other images, I skip the outlining and just paint with watercolor. I incorporate gold leaf into some of my paintings as halos on animals or flecks of sunlight on flowers. And despite the pain of life, the art I create is meant to conjure joy. I did a festival in Minneapolis and I was by this very serious oil painter, this young man who went to MCAD and he was this like caricature of this struggling artist, you know, and I look like this and my art is very cute and beautiful and flowery and we were talking and I started to tell him about my past and all of the things I've been through, the things I've struggled with, and he said, I would have had no idea, you know, but I feel like it gives me a little street cred to be like, hey, you know, you're not the only one struggling out there, but um, I have to mention Oakwood Lake State Park. It is one of the most formative places of my life. My family lived three miles away from this lake. I grew up there. That's me as a baby. Dad, is that you? I don't know. That's dad holding me. Um, I worked there for five summers. I got married there. I camp there still. Um, I'm always inspired by this park's beauty. And here's a piece I made into the forest ink on paper. It's a nine by 12. And I think I made that around 2016. So um, I love nature. Another ex example of my childhood influencing my artwork is this piece, Arrowhead Barn, which is one of my best sellers. Another ink on paper, I, I think this is around 2013. This is a picture of me sitting with my daddy's Arrowhead collection. He collected all of these uh, Native American artifacts in the fields after they tilled. And I remember he took me with once and I kept walking behind him in the field. And he said, Eileen, don't walk behind me. You're not going to find anything. And I found two arrowheads. <laughs> Younger eyes, I suppose. And then we move into the college years. These are some of my paintings I did in college. Um, that my art looks nothing like this anymore. These are all oil on canvas. Um, I found this squash flower vase at the dollar store, and I think I made like a six series painting of it. I, I didn't have a voice in college yet. I knew I liked color. I knew I liked form, but I didn't know what I wanted to say, and I was struggling with all of my own like internal demons. I was partying like way too much john alluded to that <laughs> with his uh his son and um i really liked self portraits i think i was a little bit like trapped in my own ego in college um i hadn't yet learned what it is to really care for others and love others more than you love yourself and then i got into this weird surrealism thing this is one of the last paintings i ever painted where i was like trying to like put all of these ideas together of like where i came from and where i was going and and it ended up just being kind of confusing, but they're not terrible paintings. They just, they never made me happy, you know? They never felt like, oh, this is what I wanted to say. Um, so I left college and I started teaching. John already touched on this. I was at Mickelson Middle School for most of it, 10 years. Um, and it was always my dream to teach at Brookings High School. And I'm sorry if I tear up during this part. Um, I was hired when John Livingston uh, retired, I was hired to take his place, and I was, like, so honored, you know, I, it's what I wanted my whole life, but life has other plans sometimes, so I had to leave a year ago, and I'll talk about that more. Um, what happened is I started to rediscover my inner child, there I am on the swing, this is, like, what I remember from childhood, I was always outside. I was always surrounded by greenery. I'm surprised there's not a cat in this picture because I'm always like dragging a cat around by its neck mm -hmm. and just like loving life. You know, we were humble. We were a small, humble farm. I didn't have much. 
I didn't need much. I loved my life. And the way I got back there was by having my own babies. So in 2012, I had my first pregnancy with Linus Jeffrey, and I went to the art festival, the Brookings Art Festival, and I saw this girl drawing owls on mugs. And I thought, this is so cute. I love this. Like, why don't I just draw owls? And so I sat down with paper and ink pen and my big pregnant belly, and I just started drawing. And I kept drawing. And then in 2015, I had my second baby, a little girl, Lena Lou. And so here's my owl family with two babies in it. And no, I haven't made an owl family with three babies. I've been a little busy. But um, in between those years, I made like hundreds of ink drawings. And just, this is a few of them, but I made a lot of drawings of lovers and families. Um, all kinds. I'm very inclusive. You know, I love all types of people. It's like my heart, my babies filled my heart with so much love that it just started pouring out of me, you know. And then I started painting with watercolors. And so I did my first festival in 2016. I probably started with watercolors kind of around the time Lena was born, maybe a little bit earlier than that. I was also teaching, so like, it's all a blur. I don't remember any of it, you know? I was like sleep deprived and insane. But I started painting and I started painting animals. And I, I started painting South Dakota inspired nature. So bees, dragonflies, these, two paintings on the end. I still sell prints of to this day and cards. They are two of my best sellers, the bee and the dragonfly. There's so, something so universal about a honeybee and a dragonfly. A dragonfly is very spiritual to so many people and I have loved and lost and I understand that. I feel my loved ones visiting me in the form of dragonflies all the time. I had a grandma Violet. She was Swedish. She could grow anything. And in my mind, her farm was like a secret garden. Um, the driveway was lined with marigolds. The, the, I mean, that's the farm driveway, like the gravel, like very long, 20 feet of marigolds. And then the concrete part where you parked was like peonies and roses and then there's a whole patch of poppies and hollyhocks everywhere the 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 old garage had hollyhocks like I mean you know how hollyhocks kind of just take over it was a whole thing and I had no idea that this wasn't like what everyone's grandma did you know so um I think about grandma Violet a lot and I think about how she created this magical place for me to grow up, even when times were hard, even when things weren't going so well at home. She and my grandma already really provided me with a safe place. Then 2020 hit. And like everyone else, 2020 was the hardest year. It was the pandemic. So in about the span of 10 days, I found out I got the job at BHS. We went into lockdown and I had to teach middle school art online. And I was surprised pregnant with a third baby. And I cried and I cried and I cried. And then I got really happy. And I was like, you know what? This baby was meant to be and I love him and I'm so excited. And then my water broke at 21 weeks. And by and the doctor said, go home, try to stay pregnant, we'll hospitalize you at 24 weeks. And so I was hospitalized August 17th of 2020. And during that time, I was still trying to prepare to teach art at BHS. So I made this drawing, which is actually a, a project that John Livingston probably designed, but it's a collage where you weave two pictures together, and that's Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo is my favorite artist. She's one of my greatest influences, and while I was in the hospital making this drawing, I thought, who better to draw than Frida Kahlo, who had so much pain in her life and so and overcame so much. She was uh, an incredible woman, strong, brave, um, 
I had Leif on October 3rd. We made it to 30 weeks. He was two pounds. He fought for his life. He was on every form of intervention. And the only thing I can say about that time in the NICU is that it changed me profoundly. And unless you've watched your baby fight for their life, you just can't explain it to you. But I, nothing else matters the way that Leif and Linus and Lena matter now, the way that my family matters now. And here he is, Leif Hall Binkley, two years. And I chose this quote to try to summarize. If everything around you seems dark, look again, you may be the light. When I was in the hospital, I felt like I was a piece of coal being pressed into a diamond. And as many of you know, my mother-in-law is a cancer survivor, like really had to fight for her life. And when I got out of the hospital, I, I said that to her and she looked at me and she said, yep. And we just knew, you know, sometimes these things that are the hardest thing you'll ever have to go through make you the best, better than you ever thought you could be. And so then when I got out of the hospital, the, this is what this is what happened. This is where the, the diamond comes in. But I call it the gold rush because I was heavy on the gold leaf during this phase. And people would come to my art booth, who'd been coming to my art booth for years, and they'd say, wow, you've really been through something. Something's changed, you know? And I was like, you betcha. <laughs> And then I've been working into the present. Um, now that I am a full-time artist, I'm really allowing myself to explore more of my illustrations, more of the like sort of fantasy and imaginary parts of my art. Um, again, going back to my childhood, I did end up having to leave BHS a year ago because Leif got RSV at daycare, and I said, nope, we're not doing it. You know, we, we didn't fight for this baby's life to have him go to daycare and get RSV. And again, thanks to supportive family members, I was able to do that. But um, it gave me an opportunity to pursue my art full time. And so here it is. Um, these are some of my best sellers of the past festival season. I did about nine festivals this summer. I uh, I've been to Omaha, to Minneapolis, to Estes Park, Colorado. Um, I also do commissions. I teach classes at the BAC, and I love it. I love it all. I feel so grateful and happy every day. I journal every morning, and I say my first two sentences that I start with are stay present in this day and be grateful for this life. So with that, any questions? That's my Christmas picture of my babies. <laughs> yes. Every time I see your art and hear his baby, yes. I did a commission for Erica of her grandmother's irises. So, mm -hmm. Betty? Yeah, it's just a design element that I find um, frames the artwork beautifully, but also as I moved into that gold leaf era, it does remind you of the, the medieval halos, doesn't it? Um, so it's kind of a halo for me. Um, and I've tried to work with triangles and squares and rectangles. It just doesn't feel the same as that beautiful symmetry of the circle. And I think maybe it relates back to the, the symmetry of nature and the sun, the moon, the flower. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. I was told there'd be a lot of questions. <laughs> Dad. Oh, I love the Buffalo Skull. So I had a weird childhood. My dad was a historical reenactor and I was gonna put some pictures of that in, but I felt like I maybe wouldn't have time. Um, so we would do these historical reenactments where we would, my favorite was we would dress up like 19 or 1820s fur traders. I mean, I would, I would put on a little dress and some beads and a moccasin and dad had a loincloth and like all these things that would be like terribly embarrassing if I had any idea, but. <laughs> 
I loved it. And we would go and there'd be all these weird old guys with beards and like the nicest people you've ever met. And there'd be all these skulls and teepees painted with, you know, Native American inspired artwork and just beautiful things um, that have stayed with me, like the arrowhead have stayed with me in my artwork. Yes. That's a great question. Um, so just over Christmas break, I painted some Christmas ornaments with acrylic paint and it, the, on wooden circles um, for my family members. And I loved it. I hadn't painted with acrylic ever, really, other than teaching in, it high, in the high school or middle school. And I just thought, wow, I have been so dedicated to watercolor for so many years. So I actually just purchased some acrylic paints and I asked my family members that live in beautiful places, Black Hills, Colorado, Wyoming, to send me their favorite pictures of landscapes that they've taken. And then I'm gonna, you know, with all my free time, I'm gonna do a series of acrylic landscapes. The other thing I haven't mentioned, but that is in my future, certainly, is I will illustrate a children's book someday. Um, I have three started, but I, you know, the thing about illustrating a children's book is it is six months to a year's worth of work, so there'll have to be some grant writing involved, and right now, while my baby is still two, I want to give that time to him, but once he's in his preschool, kindergarten years, then I think I will pursue that. Um, many of you know Rick and Joni Holm, Eric Holm, and I collaborate on um, this whole series of children's books where he writes the songs and then I turn the lyrics into a book. And that's just one of the books I have started. Mm -hmm. Teresa. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so I've been very busy in my lifetime. I've always created since I can remember being a child that, you know, I've always had like a set of watercolors or whatever. Um, in college, I had a boyfriend who had an aunt who taught me how to make jewelry. And once you get addicted to the beads, I mean, it's really something. So that was actually the first, uh, art that I sold was my jewelry on Etsy. Um, I haven't made jewelry in years, but that doesn't mean I won't again. And then I, I was teaching weaving to seventh graders at the middle school. And I was like, I love this. And so I ordered a bigger loom and then a bigger loom. And for a while I was making these like you know, 16 inch by like three feet long weavings. Teresa has one on her wall. I love them. Um, fiber is like a, an addiction. Fiber is so, I teach a weaving class at the BAC. And if any of you are interested, it's a lovely time. Um, I had to focus. <laughs> I just don't have time to do everything that I love. So that's why I chose painting as my main focus moving forward. Yes. All the time. I have a picture just a few days ago of Leif sitting next to me. I have a studio at home and I have a studio downtown and I have a picture of him right here with his painting and and a little praying palette and and I have my stuff over here and pretty soon I look at him you know and he's got like black teeth and the whole, I'm like okay well I think that's enough painting but yeah my children are very artistic my son Linus is a mad genius he got like Steve's like very high intellect mixed with my sort of visual ability and he draws his own maps he designs evolution of Pokemon characters. <laughs> I don't even pretend to understand what he's doing half the time. He's designed a board game that I can't even play. It's too complex. You know, so, and, and then Lena is uh, very artistic as well. She, but you know, I don't, I don't want them to be creatives unless they want to be creatives. However, the Binkley's are very musical and I, I see that in my children as well, so. 
Did you get any watercolor in college or did that come I didn't touch watercolor in college. I have no formal training in watercolor except for what I taught myself when I was teaching the kids at the middle school. Um, yeah, that's how it started. I was teaching watercolor to eighth graders and then we were doing pointillism paintings with Q-tips. And then I, at my desk, was drawing like a little deer and painting it. And the, the BAC was doing the six by six squared fundraiser at that time. And I submitted three paintings to that fundraiser. And that was the first time I had shown work publicly since college. And then I had my first like show at Cottonwood. And my father-in-law had never seen any of my art. And um, he went and to see it all up and framed at Cottonwood, he was astounded. He's like, I almost started crying, you know, like, I didn't know you could do this. And, and so um, then it proceeded from there uh, to festivals and, and other things. I do. I rent a space downtown. Um, it's the old American Family Insurance Building. It's a little two-room space. I use it primarily for storing my festival work um, because it's a big setup, as you know, Karen, and my garage is getting pretty full. And also, like, we have cats and things get a little weird sometimes. So I was like, I need, like, a climate-controlled space that's safe. And also, I do use it to make art. I use it to meet people. I use it, like, if someone wants a one-on-one -on -one art lesson, things like that. It's just a space that I can go to. I should probably use it more, but I really like being at home. So it's, you know, it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Um, short answer, yes. Long answer, I took on way too many commissions this year, and so I had to kind of cut that in half, um, and I didn't know that I, this was going to be so lovely and going to be so sort of like universally charming to people. I did scan this print before I added some of the more personal elements or scan this painting, so I might be selling this as a print with permission from the Curlins. Um, and then I live in a beautiful Victorian home that I would like to paint. Um, and then uh, I did ask dad to bring some old photos of the farm and maybe do some farm paintings. But again, it's like with all my free time, right? <laughs> like I just have to figure out what I want to make next. I mean, it's great that I have too many ideas, you know, that's like not really a problem. It's just, but so short answer, yes. Long answer, maybe in, with time. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I'll just go back to this last slide. Um, I know this is a distinguished crowd, so may, you might not have Instagram, but you can follow me there if you do, and I love it. I have an email. Um, I do have business cards up here if you'd like, and then I'll just quickly see if this link works. I do have my own website. Um, and it has galleries, and you can also buy prints and cards. Um, I still have my Christmas stuff up, which I need to, you know, take down. And then I have a commissions tab. I'm not taking commissions right now, but here you can look at more commissions I've done over the years. Um, I will be adding an events tab, a calendar with my festival season and other events that I I'm going to do that's something I learned this year to do so that that will be coming and it's all my name and art so it's really easy to find but if you want a business card they're right here thank you so much for having me it was such an honor thank you so much Eileen. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a little bit of something oh, for, for your you. trouble. Thank you for my trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much. Yeah. It was really an interesting talk. Yeah. And I can identify with a lot of what you've been through. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, thank you so much for coming and talking to us today.
Appreciate it. Let's give her another.